Good evening, everyone. This is Juan Soto. I'm your moderator for the Access with SQL Server Group. This is our first meeting back from our season starting now in September. As you know, we took a prolonged break over the summer with May, June, and July. But now we're back better than ever. We have an amazing presenter and uh, topic. Before we get started with that, a few announcements. Number one, if you don't know this already, we have Microsoft Access has a new program manager. So we're excited about that. Her name is Linda. Not the Linda you and that we have here, another Linda. I see you, Linda. Thank you for Hello. coming. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're excited about uh, having a new program manager that actually programmed in Access back in the day and is a believer. So we're happy to have her on board. And uh, I believe Maria from um, Access Lunchtime has her as a guest later this month. So be tuned to to, to uh, make, make sure you, you 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 go ahead and participate in that. More details at accessusergroups.org. Uh, the second thing is there's been a new development with Microsoft Access. Now, my, they have just released a new update and uh, Access 32-bit is now large memory aware in the beta channel. So that's slowly running out, rolling out. Uh, what that means is now it can take advantage of the four uh, four gigabytes of RAM that um, that your PC may have. So if you have a four gigabyte RAM, great. But a lot of PCs they ship with a lot more RAM than that. Eight gigabytes, sixteen gigabytes, right? And so if you're really tight for memory, your best bet is to go to Access sixty four bit, and that way you won't have any limits on four gigabyte RAM. All right, so our guest tonight is Roy Kim. He is an MVP. Uh, we're happy to have him. I've been working with Roy now for a couple of years. He's an expert in Azure. Lives in Canada with his family. Recently moved into a new home, I think it is, or remodeled his home. I can't remember which one of the two. Roy? Yeah, yeah, yeah new home. Uh, yeah, uh, new, new, yeah, built up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> good, yeah. good. And so he's been quite busy uh, remodeling, but he took some time off for his busy schedule to uh, present for us tonight. Roy, uh, take it away, my friend. I'll be here as a moderator. Let me make you the presenter. Hold on a second while awesome. I do that. Thank you. Okay, so let me, uh, I guess, uh, share my screen here. Okay. You guys you guys see my PowerPoint? I see it, yes. Thank you. Okay. And the screen is, uh, okay, okay, cool, cool. So yeah, thanks everyone for uh, joining, and uh, you know, really excited to do this talk. Uh, <clears throat> so we're gonna go over like the the uh, fundamentals of kind of Azure Open AI service, right? With the whole um, kind of the a whole AI boom around here. So let, let's see how what we can learn from this. And so yeah, uh, simple agenda is that to look at uh, what Azure Open AI, AI is. Uh, what are the models like GPT-3, GPT-4? Um, I'll go with the, um, in the Azure portal, the uh, OpenAI Playground. And also with the OpenAI um, API, there are a bunch of parameters. Well, I'll go, go through them in, in depth. And then I'll go with, through some kind of demos, just going, working with the API and, and such, right? And then talk about pricing and, you know, more specifics on embedding models and, and things like that. So yeah, I, I've, um, you know, born and raised in Toronto, just working with Microsoft platform, pretty much my entire career as a .NET developer, SharePoint, Azure, you know, now get into some, some of the uh, generative AI stuff. And then uh, just, yeah, kind of consulting and, you know, lo love to be part of the, the communities, right? And just kind of grow together with everyone and learn from each other. So yeah, that's, that's about me. <laughs> okay. So I'm sure everybody has heard of, you know, open uh, whole, the whole chat GBT thing, right? And it's, yeah. it's almost- Hey, uh, Roy, I do need yeah. you to keep open the uh, participant window because now that you're the host, we may have people in the lobby. So okay. make sure you admit them. Uh, so go ahead and click on the admit participant. All? Oh. Yeah, admit all of them. If you see anybody oh, okay, there. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I have it on my all second right. monitor you know, right, Great. right here. Welcome uh, everyone. We are just starting. Welcome again. We just uh, Roy. We just introduced Roy. You haven't missed much. Go ahead, Roy. Keep going. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for joining. I'll, I'll keep an eye on the admit all. Okay. So what is uh, Azure OpenAI? You know, you can get it through the Azure portal. 
So it's a new capability. Basically, it's the same, pretty much the same model behind uh, OpenAI's uh, ChatGPT. And, you know, with uh, ChatGPT, there's GPT-3 and now there's GPT-4 models. And we can really leverage that. And the whole point of that is use it in more of an enterprise um, environment, right? And, and there's more capability. So it's not just for like, you know, end user consumption, um, but has more capabilities for kind of in a in a business environment. Okay. And, you know, things, um, some capabilities that, yeah, again, there's various models, which we'll go through uh, fine tuning. So you can take a model and kind of uh, fine tune that with your own data set. Um, and uh, also, as you know, in Azure, there's something called virtual network and private link support so that you can have an app and uh, and it hits the API through in, in your internal Azure virtual network, okay, and not going through the identity. So it's more uh, ad adopt adhering to security standards and things like that. And then also in the Azure portal provides uh, managed identity. Let's see here, uh, yeah, managed identity in in the user experience in the in the pro uh, playground and. Um, and you can compare with uh, Azure OpenAI and the Open OpenAI that's from um, you know OpenAI, right? So yeah, as you know, there is a partnership between OpenAI, OpenAI, and uh, Microsoft, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So kind of let's glance through. Uh, let's see here, kind of uh, what uh, uh, kind of yeah. Let's look through the Azure portal right here. Uh, here and so let me bring up uh, Open AI. So I already <laughs> already uh, provisioned it, and so right here. So I have that right here. Okay, cool. So here you get uh, an endpoint. Okay, so you so you can go into that API. Pass in your your prompts and all that, and then and then uh, return like a response or uh, a chat completion and things like that. And of course, what's important is the keys, right? So kind of like a key is your your password and things like that, right? And then your model deployment. We'll we'll get into that a bit, okay? And then uh, pricing tiers, right? So right now it's just kind of what's available to me as the standard. And also, as I mentioned before, kind of the, the networking, right? So I don't have any networking. So right now, that is totally uh, public. There's no, uh, you know, network boundary or anything like that. But if I wanted to have it uh, through a virtual network, and then you create a private endpoint into that virtual network, then we can keep that traffic traversing through uh, internally. And then having uh, an identity, a managed identity, so that like if your app is running under this managed identity, then you get uh, more like access security to this open AI instead of being anonymous. Okay, and then we have your standard cost analysis, alerts and monitoring and things like that within the Azure store. So that's kind of what is available. It's uh, yeah, pretty pretty basic, but I'm sure there will be more uh, capabilities. Oh yeah, and also I just want to mention here that uh, feel free to interrupt with any questions, or I like to have an open uh, collaborative dialogue. So yeah, feel free to come on mute. Um, I'm more than welcome to do that. And, and again, this is for for you guys, right? So um, so yeah, feel feel comfortable with that. So why don't we now? So let's see here. Let's go to models and deployments. So you go manage deployment. So this opens up Azure AI Studio. Okay, and let me walk you through what this provides, right? So I think I think the first thing, I know there's chat completions, Dolly, that's cool, deployments and models. So really <clears throat> the first um, first step in kind of getting set up is kind of look at the, the, uh, the models that are uh, available to us. So these are models and I think the ones, there's a whole bunch, but the ones I would recommend to focus on is really the this GPT-3 uh, Turbo. As you can see, it was kind of released in June. The model version is a little bit higher. 
This is another one. G GTPT, GPT 35 Turbo 16K. <clears throat> that means it takes uh, 16K tokens. Okay, we'll talk about that in a bit. And GPT 4, and then one with 32K token. And I'll talk a lot about embeddings. This, this is really cool and powerful. Um, and then these are like older ones right here, like ADA, um, ADA, uh, Babbage, Curry, like A, B, C, D, like Da Vinci and all that stuff, right? So really from A, the ones that start with A, ADA, Babbage, Curry, Da Vinci, they kind of rise in, in capabilities with more accuracy, you know, more capabilities. So ADA is more simple, you know, just for classification. Um, let's say you want to classify a bunch of words. But the, the but the performance is fast and it's it's cheap. Okay, so you got that um, the linear relationship between capability and cost. But really, I think the um, things are priced to be pretty affordable uh, or or reasonable if you stick with let's say like the GPT three Turbo uh, and yeah GPT four. So really, if you're starting out. You might as well just start with these ones, right? But if you're doing really intensive, let's say you have a, like a huge data set of, let's say, you know, social media posts like tweets and and comments and social comments and all that stuff, right? And you want to do mm -hmm. some, you know, text classification. You know, probably you want to go with the Ada, Babbage, and Curry because you're gonna like uh, go against that API maybe uh, like hundred thousand times. Okay. And so you want to keep your costs down, but you, you just want like simple classification, sentiment analysis and things like that. So that's where you want to gravitate. But if you're going to do the whole uh, like chat GBT, you know, um, you know, with, with, com with complex documents and PDFs, like legal briefs, marketing and all that stuff, then mm -hmm. you want to go with uh, Turbo and uh, GT, uh, GPT-35 Turbo and uh, or GPT-4. That's the rundown with the models. Any I'll pause for any any questions? Anybody have any questions so far? I do want to say that these models here are chat-based models, right? In other words, they're not uh, designed to uh, look at uh, Excel files and say, okay, based on the trend of these Excel files, I can predict how to handle an Excel file, right? Um, okay, so there are ways where you can plug in, let's say, and that is, let's say you have Excel um, cell row or Excel cell or row, okay? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you can write like a macro or, or some, some like, you know, function call, and mm -hmm. then out, and then let's say you want to do text analysis on, you know, row, you know, column B, okay? Yeah. And yeah. then output like, okay, is this a positive comment, negative comment? Or uh, or a prompt saying that um, is this like social post in column B discussing about um, marketing strategy or product reviews, right? Or what is their intent, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, or would would this comment signal something that they're interested in buying the product? So you can have that output right going right into like let's say you know the respective column like column. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is fascinating to me because I want to be able to leverage AI with my clients. I've got many clients that have mundane tasks. They have employees. Like I have this one client who's got a hundred employees and all they're doing is day in, day out is looking at medical, medical requests for medical files. Right. So they look at the request and they reply back, Hey, you're missing this. Or mm -hmm. they look at a request, say, Hey, you're, um, we uh we need to look at who the provider of medical files. Oh, there's a twenty five dollar fee. Let me email the client. Right. So right. these are all mundane tasks that an uh -huh. AI could handle if I can only program it to look at how I handle fifty thousand requests from my SQL Server database, mm -hmm. so they can see the request, how it was handled, and say, oh yeah, when I see the situation, I know what to do. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, totally. So actually, I have my demo. I will be going through a, uh, a CSV file. So, um, yeah, yeah, I'll good. get to that in a bit. Okay, cool. But good, good, good question. So if anyone has, uh, any comments, uh, feel free to jump in. So, so that's the model. Okay. Now, how do we use these models? Well, we have to deploy the model. So we go into deployments. Okay. These are ones that I've deployed. You go to create deployment, you know, select, select the model. Let's say here and then, uh, GPT three, four, four, you know, or for like marketing purposes, things like that, right? 
and and then you can you know set like token token limits and all that stuff so here this is where you deploy the model so that you you can use them for me i just named um the deployment the, the, the exact same thing as the model that's basically what what, what i've done right because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just you know doing simple 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 de demos and learnings so once you deploy that model now you have the option of going to kind of a, like a, a chat based ui or completions. So really, uh, fundamentally, the first really building block or is really like these um, the API calls are really completions, right? So you know, um, so if I go, you know, DaVinci GP3, how to install a light fixture in my home, you know, things like that, right? And then, mm -hmm. and. Then and then, so I am leveraging this deployed model that, that I have, okay? <clears throat> and so, and then you can switch between other models. Okay, let, let's just say, you know, text data is very less less capable. Let's, let's see what it says, I'm not really sure. So, so, so here it gave a, a different response, a little bit more verbose, a little bit uh, simpler didn't really give like very in-depth instructions if i go to the uh, chat GP, but remember the completions is not a chat based kind of interface even though i use the the chat gpt deployment i probably use here um it kind of yeah kind of came off not what i wanted here so hold on a second it's if i go deployments what i call the See here, chat GP. Yeah, it was the GPT two Turbo, right? So you know that's that's a that's a good one. So any case, kind of went off off the rails here. And then uh, let's let's try this again. Let's I put the temperature there. I'll I'll explain these parameters in a bit. And uh, so here. Yeah, kind of went off the rails here. So it's it's pretty much uh, kind of hit and miss at some times. Uh, but let's turn to let's see here the the chat uh, playground. So with here, let me clear this chat here. And if I were to do that, then we can we can choose we can choose the deployment here again, and then and then do that. So here we get that um, chat bot like. Uh, user experience, and so the the one thing that um, this uh, you know chat playground builds upon is that really remember the the building blocks is that it's a the completion prompt and the completion response here, but <clears throat> here what's happening is that in this chat playground it is considering the dialogue that happened in like the last ten messages, so when I want to follow up. And say, okay, how to install a, um, let's say, a, a TV wall, wall mount. And then it, it kind of has the, the feel that, you know what, we're doing some kind of like do it yourself, Home Depot stuff, you know? And so it kind of it knows how to like answer a bit more to the intent because it, it's taking the context from previous messages. Really, um, in a completion, it's taking the whole context. And then and then uh, passing it and then getting the next response back. So that's what that playground is all is all about. So hold on, let me go back to my slides. Kind of go through anything. Um, yeah. So just a quick rundown of what the models are. Okay. So GTP four. It's it's the latest model. So in in OpenAI, not my, not the Azure OpenAI. It's multimodal. Okay, I haven't really played around with it because you have to you have to pay for it. But <clears throat> the key thing is that it's you know built trained on 100 trillion parameters. Um, don't know exactly what what that means, but you know uh, with more compute power, you know uh, with those Nvidia chips and all that stuff, right? You know with more data and all that stuff, right? And so and the thing is has improved multilingual capabilities. Uh, keep in mind that just because this is newer, um, the training data is still up to September 2021, right? So even if you ask GPT-4, hey, what is GPT-4? It, it doesn't know. It, it, it doesn't because, you know, for some reason, they didn't put that in the training data. The, the one thing is that uh, 
it's sorry, in OpenAI, it's not multi meaning you can't put in um, Azure OpenAI, it's not multimodal. You can't pass pictures. So that's what multimodal, you can do pictures, videos, and, and things like that, right? Like you can uh, take a picture of, let's say, a piece of paper with written text, and then you can say, okay, what is this piece of paper saying? Extract that and uh, create a story uh, around it for five-year-old kids or something like that. You know what I mean? So yeah. it, it can take those capabilities, but it, it doesn't seem to do that yet in uh, Azure or OpenAI. Um, and so GP35 is also, uh, yeah, kind of what, what uh, I've been playing around with more and it can do what, what in, you know, as you've seen in, in chat GPT. Um, embeddings is another model and I'll go into that. Now this is, if you're gonna get really into like scenarios where you wanna like chat with private documents and, and do a certain type of uh, search with it, like cognitive search, semantic search, uh, embeddings is 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 really um, powerful, and and this is something that um, uh, you need to really kind of learn and develop and play around with, right? So, uh, I'll get that I'll get to that in a bit. So again, it's another the key point is it's another model, okay, where you can take uh, text, uh, feed into the model, and it'll return in this case um, a vector like numeric uh, representation of that of that text. Okay, and then you can do uh, fascinating things with that, which is, you know, uh, chatting on um, uh, or uh, searching on, inquiring on private, your own document in Wikipedia. So Dot Daly uh, now. Hey, is, uh, Roy, we got a question from uh, George. Oh. Here's this. Can the model read a JPEG of a page or text and analyze it? In other words, it's not the actual text. It's a, it's a picture of the text. Oh, yeah, 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 totally. So. Uh, that's in um, the uh, OpenAI, uh, not the you know the Sam Altman OpenAI, open but mm -hmm. not Azure OpenAI. I don't I haven't seen that yet. So okay. um, and there is a, when when GPT four was uh, re uh, released that you know the CEO of OpenAI Sam he did a demo of that where he took a picture um, on his phone and you know with that uh, had like an image, like a piece of paper with text on it and uh, and was able to uh, extract that text. He even um, had a picture of like a, a like a web page design yeah. with, a, uh, with like a search bar or text boxes and stuff and go write me JavaScript code or HTML code that will, you know, build the, you know, build this uh, web page design, you know, okay. so hopefully that that answers your question it does okay cool cool okay you know what uh okay i'll open up the chat window here keep an eye on that i didn't have that open okay cool no good question so um so go okay so moving moving forward okay we have these things called parameters and i find this yeah so when you do your chat here there's something called temperature Max length token, stop sequences, top probabilities, frequency penalty, presence, best of, all, all that stuff, right? So uh, to summarize, okay, and, you know, I really try to get research this really deeply. You know, uh, I read the Microsoft documentation. It's not very clear. It's not very comprehensive. It's not uh, very much in depth and of kind of what these can do and just me playing, but this is this is how how I take it, okay? And um, um, so basically, when you when you're prompting, um, like things like temperature, um, when you have zero, it's more like um, deterministic, okay? It's more um, you want to know like tactically, kind of step by step, kind of the black and white answer, okay? Um, where when you increase the temperature to one. Um, it gets more creative, creative, meaning it can be more storytelling or more words kind of around around something, right? So, like, you know, how do you uh, um, uh, bake uh, a loaf of, loaf of bread, right? So, if you put the temperature to one, you know, it just may have a lot more words and just be very wordy, okay? And it could be a bit like storytelling or poetic or things like that, right? So if you want to do things that are more like storytelling, uh, you know, 
creative material, uh, creative content, poetry, things like that, then mm-hmm. you want to have like temperature to to one. Okay, so you know I, I know like the audience here, and the same thing with whenever I do these Chat GPT exercises, you know I always gravitate towards like things that are more like black and white answers, like give me a solution, right? You know the the truth, give me the truth, right? Yeah. So I always gravitate towards that, right? But keep in mind that really uh, this large language model is kind of this you know built uh, designed to be very. Um, from from all angles, for all different use cases and storytelling. And, you know, again, you can say, okay, how do I um, uh, install my light fixture and do it as a rap song? You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm sure you yeah. heard that, that example, right? So it's really capable of all these things. Um, and so, but like all these parameters will help kind of, uh, kind of tune your responses, right? So uh, I'll just go there really, really briefly. Right, so temperature uh, controls randomness. Okay, um, you know, increase the value to be more f- informative and creative, uh, like writing a story or po- poem. Okay, max length tokens. Th- this is this is kind of important, especially with us kind of tech guys. Um, it, it depends on the model, right? So you saw GPT sixteen k or thirty two k or things like that, right? So it's when you when you do a prompt. And uh, and prompting completion, like call the API, right? The number of to- uh, tokens, right? So really, uh, you know, characters, uh, word syllables are usually token is roughly four characters in in English. The prompt um, uh, um, will uh, take into consideration the, the the maximum length. So you would you would assume, okay, well, you know what? I want to have I want to put it to the max length. You know, one thousand, two thousand, sixteen thousand. Why not, right? But you have to be um, careful with the consequences of that, which meaning it will drive up your price. Okay, you might get too too much of a, a wordy response or hallucinations or things like that. Because um, if you put it at like uh, max token length at around maybe between 100 and 200, then it 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 you get your, your response that's a bit more concise and more to the point. Okay instead of veering off and uh, just talking about gibberish, right? And also, if you do max uh, uh, length tokens, you might get a very um, uh, slower response as well. So if you're going to iterate through uh, a thousand lines of, of, of rows in a database or anything like that, it can take longer and more expensive if you just say, okay, max length tokens. So you want to be... Um, uh, careful with that, okay. Um, stop or oh, sorry, stop sequences, okay. Um, you know, basically, when it's about to generate your your response, okay. You know, uh, like a certain keywords that you you want to tell them to to stop at, right? Or if there's a phone number or social security number, you want them to kind of uh, stop at that. Or you know, things, you know, simple things as you know, um, maybe if you say, give me a list of something, stop at, you know, um, give me a numbered list of something, you want to stop at five, like five dot, you know, that could be a stop completion. So so that's uh, what that is. Uh, top, top probabilities is also, again, controlling randomness, okay? So you, there's a valid values between zero, zero and one. Um, me playing around with it, I, I couldn't really get a good feel between zero and one. So that's the, the challenge with this. So um, from my uh, experience so far, when you play around with, let's say, the frequency penal, uh, penalty, again, it's just controlling randomness and, and wordiness and things like that, right? So, um, you know, here, uh, frequency penal, uh, pen, uh, penalty, you may have a certain word repeat many times, okay? Uh, but you don't want them to repeat that, that word many, depending on the, the scenario, right? So if you want um, more um, like discrete or clear or definitive answers, then you want to do more zero. And the same thing with pres- presence penalty. But honestly, when I play around with it, um, uh, zero between zero and two, I can't really get a good uh, pattern feeling 
forex. So um, my recommendation is just keep it around, you know, close to zero, you know, uh, for if you want more like uh, definitive answers. Okay, and then okay, best of um, right here. Okay, best of is uh, so you can tell uh, when you do completion, um, the OpenAI can come up with let's say best of three. Okay. Now it'll generate like three responses, but they that in within that response, it'll take like the best one out of that, right? But remember, there's more cost to this because it's processing more, and even the again the unused uh, candidates or unused responses will incur usage cost. So again, there's these other uh, capabilities, okay? Um, and also, okay, so let me let me turn to here. So in in a the chat playground, okay, you know, I'm sure you guys have heard of prompt engineering, right? So one of one of the things that make it kind of um, helpful kind of, uh, in prompt engineering is adding system uh, messages. Okay, so when you're starting this chat, okay, you want to say, you know, uh, this is a IRS chat bot. Okay, so you want to um, so every chat prompt, okay, you want to kind of ground or, uh, you know, create the context, okay, um, or conversation brown boundary by uh, declaring these uh, pr uh, prompts, okay? So, you know, you are a IRS uh, chat box. Uh, primary goal is to help users file their tax returns for the year 2022. And, you know, and also the other side, right? Do not answer... Um, Non-tax related questions, do not answer, that's not related to the United States. So th that helps a lot, right? Because um, it may, part of its response may consider, you know, um, you know, other country, uh, tax codes or, you know, uh, tax laws from other countries, right? So you want to really um, uh, set the boundary for that. And then also uh, what we have here is... Let's say these are called few shot examples, few shot learning. Okay, so what, what you do here is, uh, it, like for example, if, if if one was to ask when do I need to file my taxes by, you know, it'll come up with this res response, right? So any questions that semantically sound like you know, mean this, you know, the chatbot will come up with an answer like this. Let's say a uh, user goes, um, uh, I want to know about investing um, and tax savings, right? So uh, you, you may want to, again, scope it to say that I do, I don't answer questions related to investing. You know, things like that, right? So you add that as an example. So you add these to kind of help ground. So, so that's the terminology with um, kind of the prompt engineering is to really ground and to limit or reduce what we call hallucination. It's very much a, a art uh, rather than a science. It's uh, very much getting a feel for things and just, you know, trial and error at this point. And the same thing with these parameters, okay? There's really not much to said about. I bet you, like, even behind the scenes here, I, I bet you, like, the implementation of these things are probably evolving and changing, you know? So really keep in mind, like, just me um, kind of playing with these, looking at the documentation. This is still, I would think, very early on uh, product, okay? Uh, still very early you know, I'm sure behind the scenes they're refining and tuning and and uh, bug fixing like everything. You know what I mean? But uh, it's still good to just start off with and create you know a strategy and when you know when things get more mature and you're you're ready to go. You know, so so that's uh, so that's that with you know um, this. Uh, chat playground. Okay, so it, so let's let's talk about more code. How do I code for this, right? So let's see here. Um, let's see here. So let's say my income was uh, in 2022 tax year 
uh, was uh, you know one hundred one uh, hundred thousand in uh, New York State. Uh, how much taxes would I pay? You know, so income taxes, right? So let, let's let's see what it, it says right here, right? So max response of eight hundred. Uh, that's that's a bit higher than the two hundred that I mentioned. But keep in mind that uh, these system messages where you have on here, it's going to be part of the uh, tokenization. Okay, I mean the 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 token uh, uh, account. So it's going to go against this, right? So let's do that. And uh, blah blah blah. So approximately eighteen thousand one hundred and seventy five uh dollars okay now okay how, how do we how do we code for this right so we go here view code and we have various options right so we have here json python c sharp and curl okay so i'm not much of a python guy i'm, I'm really learning python here it's really cool uh, more of a c sharp guy and javascript but anyways let's let's just take this so let's do a demo okay let's take take all this <clears throat> And so uh, let's go to my VS Code here. And see here, uh, chat demo taxes uh, dot py. Okay, okay, I'm gonna paste that in here. Okay, so uh, so here I have AES Code installed. I have I'm doing a Windows environment. Um, I have um, you know Python you know, version 3.11 installed, all that stuff, and the VS Code extensions uh, took a bit, but, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, typical when you're, you know, installing frameworks and such, right? So um, one thing I'll, I'll run, run by this code is, again, my uh, Azure Open AI kind of endpoint, okay, the API version, and also, you know, if you notice back in the in the keys and endpoints in the Azure portal is like, you know, your your API key, right, or kind of the the password, right. So this is sensitive. So I already set this up. It's an environment variable uh, in my Windows environment. So um, it's just going to retrieve it as such, right. So um, here's my engine, which is the name of the deployment, okay, not not the model. Uh, here's the the message. Okay, but as you can see, it includes that that um, system message, okay, in there. Okay, and then um, let's see here. Uh, uh, yeah, includes a system message. Does it include my my uh, question there? But okay, so let's uh, let's see here, and then. And then I want to print out my response here. So let's give this a go here. So F5. Oh, API key. Okay. Uh, maybe okay, wait, let me compare this. Oh, okay. Should be this one. So I, I, I named my environment variable, like the key as this one. So let me, let me switch that up. Do that. That's really my environment variable. The five. Okay, let's see here. And okay, let me do this one. Print, print, response F5. Okay, here we go. So, so here's my response in uh, JSON. Okay. Uh, that's the model name, etc. Um, and here's the con content. Um, and that that was the uh, the response to that. Uh, but yeah, I guess yeah, I didn't include the, the the original question, so I had to build that in. But anyways, th that's the flow. You know, um, here you get the usage. How many? Uh, Completion tokens, total tokens, etc. Even though you, I set the max token at 800, it does seem like it it kind of processes more than your max token limit. Um, mm -hmm. So it doesn't really error out 
uh, if it goes above it, you know. So, um, okay, any any questions there? I think what it is with uh, when it comes to uh, the audience here, we're VBA programmers, right? Mm -hmm. And so when we want to implement something like this in our applications and access, we're building a separate assembly, a DLL, if you will, yeah, that will uh, interface and access and then uh, achieve the same results, right? And uh, just because it's just a pain in the butt to get this working. I did get this working, something similar working, with Azure uh, using the pure access solution, I had to parse the JSON and I had to formulate the uh -huh. the uh, the ask right, and it was just a pain. I think if I had to do it again, I would just do a DLL. The problem with the DLL is now you have to distribute the DLL with the app mm -hmm. where it right. goes. So, um, so you when you do the DLL, is it just C sharp? Code? Yeah, you would use C sharp or yeah. whatever okay. my programming team likes to do it because you know I'm a programmer, access programmer. I'm not C sharp or C++ or anything like that, right? Whatever my uh, engineering team comes up with, that's what we decide to do. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, again, there, there's that option, right, just to, just to do it in C Sharp, you know. Um, really, Python, um, the Python language seems like the go-to when you see demos with with AI and stuff because, really, Python is the language for data, right, mm -hmm. managing data, data science, and, you know, all, all that, right? So, yeah. You know that's kind of the go-to right so but yeah i'm more of a c-sharp developer and uh yeah it's it it works with that uh and then uh compile it into a dll and load into your access application mm -hmm. um so so anyways so it's gonna even with c-sharp it's gonna be just the same right same structure right you you know you give it some um, parameters, you know, into the HT API call, you're going to return it uh, and as a, as a dot net object of some sort, and then, and then the process and then, you know, work with it. Right. So, okay, cool. And then, um, mm -hmm. let's see here, moving on. So, uh, okay. One, th one cool thing is, uh, so I already talked about like few shot learning and all. So one, one is value, right? So I'm not going to go through a demo just 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 to be, uh, you know, just to save time, right? Uh, but yeah, you just go to Dali, uh, enter a, a prompt, okay? So it's another uh, model and uh, for images. So here I say draw a landscape design with trees, patio stone for an area of 2,000 square feet for a residential backyard. The dimensions of the backyard is 50 by 40 feet. So it came up with these, right? It's, 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 Love it. It's pretty cool. You know what I mean? Yes. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a start. You know, you know the, the demos mm -hmm. you see on the Internet is like, you know, show me a picture with a zebra, you know, uh, as an astronaut in space, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, or a cat you know, in, in space or something like that, right? And they just fuse pictures together, right? Like, that's that's cool. That's cool eye candy and stuff. But, like, you know, you like you know, an audience like us, we want to do things that are, like, productive. I tried this with, like, um, let's say architectural, you know, like, app architecture with, you know, web and database. And, yeah, it looked really, really messy, right? So, you know. Well, I, I actually could, used uh, this to create an ad for a periodical. we running ads right now. In, oh, okay. Yeah, in, yeah. Industry News. And um, we deal a lot with food companies. And so we, we created an ad. And I told uh, Dolly, create, uh, give me, create an image of a production line producing loaves of bread. Oh, nice. And I use that image in my ad, and I label these bread with a number. And I say, look, you're producing more than bread. You're producing data. Mm -hmm. We can help you analyze it, right? So it was a great success for us to use the oh, artificial okay. intelligence. Awesome. But what the most people tell you is, you know, if you're going to use an AI image, it is free copyright, but what do they say when you use it? What to it? make sure you recognize, you put a little disclaimer at the bottom so it's generated with AI. Mm, yeah, right? it's yeah, a proper yeah. etiquette that people tell you to do. Yeah, yeah, makes sense, makes sense. Yeah, totally. Marketing seems like the 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 go to use case, right? Mm -hmm. For um for generative AI. So yeah. okay, cool. So that's uh Dali. Okay, one thing 
um, that, okay, we as developers and technologists is that if you want to really uh, develop your uh, skills with uh, like uh, Azure Open AI is really the embeddings uh, model. So, oh, just Okay, so with the uh, embeddings model. So really the scenario is this, the high level, and I'm not, uh, and maybe I'll do this in a future uh, session to do like, uh, how do you chat with your own documents, right? Like that's kind of like the, the hot use case, right? Okay, I can do chat GPT on information that, that was out on the public internet and stuff like that, but I don't want to feed, you know, snippets of my clients' legal documents and chat over them, right? How do I do it in a in a private way, right? So really it's um, leveraging the embedding model. It's It's one little block. But I just want to touch touch on it, right? We'll do another session. I'll go through the whole, um, you know, scenario of chatting on like private PDFs and stuff like that. So really, the embeddings model is another is 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 a model, right? But you you give it a prompt, okay? But it's going to return a um, a a vector, okay? So embedding models can convert convert input data, text, images, uh, but but return it as a vector representation. Okay. And that's really a vector sequence of numbers, okay? And so the model uh, does that, okay? And um, and then once you have data that's in uh, vector, uh, like number representations, okay? You can compare, like let's say you have a phrase that, okay, the, uh, the dog um, um, ate, uh, whatever, like um, kibbles and bits or whatever, and the cat ate tuna, okay? Um, and then you say something like, uh, whatever you call it, I, I drove a car. And then you put them into numerical representation, right? And then you can compare the, the semantic similarity, the, the how similar the meanings are. And then you can do, that, do it mathematically. By having that, right, you can... Uh, store these vector representations in a database. So let's say you have a bunch of documents and uh, like paragraphs, let's say paragraph by paragraph of legal documents, and you store them as, as vectors. And then you want to chat like, okay, you know, what is the copyright law for uh, AI generated images? You know, things like that, you know, like, cause you, you did a generate image based on some modern artwork out there, right? So, you know, anyway, so you, you prompt on that and that your prompt, your question, okay, you know, tell me about copyright law in, in this state. It turns into a vector, okay? And then you go to this vector database and you compare the, the vectors, uh, all the vectors in that database. And then there may be some similarity with that and it'll return those paragraphs, right? And including with the large language model, come up with a uh, human uh, meaningful response. So ho hopefully, I know it's it's a lot to get your head wrapped around, but my, my point in here is- Wow, it's using a mathematical model to compare documents. Darn, darn, darn. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so that, that's what the embeddings uh, model. So anyway, let me, let me run through, um, a uh, uh, example here, right? So, okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, let me go back to this thing. So here, uh, again, Python, I'm using Jupyter Notebook here. And so this is just an example from um, uh, Microsoft Learn, right? So the data here is 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 the CSV. Okay, hold on. Uh, what was it? How did I do that? How do I open it as like a, like rows, tables and rows. Uh, there was a select convert, uh, open with, uh, oh yeah, right here, CSV. Okay, cool. So there's there's this stuff, right? So um, whatever, bills or laws. So one, section A, short title, national science, bill to amend, text length, summary length. So there's all these uh, snippets of, whatever bills and laws and so what we want what we want to do is convert them into vector representation but we're using the embeddings model and and this is also kind of like okay well how do we work with rows of data let's say right so this python script uh does that so let's see here 
So I'll walk you through this, right? So obviously we want to import all the libraries, pandas, numpy. Those are extremely popular. Of course, the open AI uh, utilities, right? Especially the uh, Git embedding and uh, the API key, all this stuff. And then, you know, all this stuff is really to read, read the CSV file, you know, do some normalization, cleaning, all this. So let's just run this, this bit right here. It's not calling OpenAI yet. It's just kind of uh, preparing the, the data, right? So and then here, so the DF, the data frame of bills, so the, of the, the text column, okay? So that's, that's what, we, what we get out of there. It did some kind of data cleansing. Now here, what I'm doing is I'm taking the uh, column, uh, you know, call text and go through apply. So it's, you know, iterating through those rows and, you know, by a Lambda expression and calling the get embedding function. So this is the get embedding. We'll, we'll do a, a prompt or call the uh, Azure OpenAI and uh, using the uh, uh, text embedding ADA002. That's the uh, uh, model deployment that I have. I've set up. Return it into a row called ADA V2. Okay. So let's run that. So this is actually running through uh, Azure OpenAI right now. And it takes some time. So it's really, really doing some serious number crunching here. I think, I think, I think it takes like 30 seconds. Okay, cool. So as you see here, let me make it bigger. So it took the text column and then it returned this vector re representation. So uh, yeah, it's kind of truncated, uh, but that's what that embedding model uh, has done and also counts the number of tokens. And so really whatever this uh, text is, uh, it did a numerical representation. It's, a, it's an array of, of numbers, okay? So when you take this, uh, the next step uh, would, tip, would uh, typically be is that you store this into a vector uh, database, right? There's also, there's a um, Pinecone, which just came out with uh, in Azure, okay? It's open source, you know, but really uh, there's, Azure Cognitive Services, okay, which has a, a vector database capability and you would store it in there, right? And then once you store it in there and you say, okay, well, you may start to ask uh, questions, okay, on let's say, okay, uh, what do you call it? Education Training for Health Act, okay? And there's something about diabetes and stuff like that, right? So if you start to uh, ask a question about, okay, well, what does the Education and Training for Health Act of 2017 speak about for, um, you know, uh, uh, diabetes and uh, children being overweight and, and things like that? And what are the guidelines and stuff like that, right? So um, your prompt would uh, be a query to that vector database. And then along with, uh, and then, uh, with the uh, Azure OpenAI against a large language model, you know, it'll just kind of take that together and give a kind of meaningful response, right? Kind of uh, 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 an answer to that question, right? So really that's the, the magic here, you know? So I'd love to do another follow-up session on, uh, on such a scenario, but really I think that's what a lot of um, people are working on or playing around with and stuff like that. So, so that's, again, how, um, as you see here, we iter iterated through a bunch of rows, okay, and to do that. So you could, you could do the same thing. Let's see, let's go back to the code here. So this Lambda uh, expression here. So, you know, you can, you know, go through each row, do a function call against the API, selecting a uh, model, and in saying, okay, and adding, having a prompt, like, hey, uh, classify this, or what's the sentiment, or is this a customer that's ready to, ready to purchase, or risk analysis, or something like that, things like that, or is there fraudulent um, 
data in, in this data set or something like that with credit card numbers or something like that. So, you know, possibilities are pretty uh, endless or, or, um, or abundant here to do that. So any questions with this? Kind of how we've demonstrated just working with data and the API and, you know, with Python. So, okay, I cool. think what so, it boils down to is you got to train the AI and then you can leverage the AI. Yeah, and yeah, one yeah. One of the advantages of going with Azure as opposed to ChatGPT is you have that ability to keep it confidential, right? I mean, you're not going to go to ChatGPT uh, open AI directly and say, well, I got these 10,000 documents analyzed because that's your data. That's your privacy, right? And so with mm -hmm. Azure, A Azure AI, you can use that in confidence because it's going to stay within your tenant mm -hmm. and not going to be dispersed, right? That Microsoft is not going to obviously decimate that data somewhere else. Exactly. Juan? Exactly. Juan? Yes. Can you can specify a use case where you would see this in your Consulting business. I'm retired. I don't care. So <laughs> I'm looking for a use case that uh, that you yeah. would be looking for for this. Yeah. So look, um, I have a client that uh, receives requests from lawyers for medical documents. So if I'm a lawyer and I want to sue uh, Farsiga, right? And I'm like, okay, I got a class of 500 people. Well, my client will get the medical records for those 500 people, retrieve the, the emergency room records, the hospital records, x-rays, CRT, you name it. And the problem is that each one of those requests is a separate vendor. So if I'm one of those people on the tort on the lawsuit, I went to the emergency room. Okay, there, I need to contact the hospital's emergency room records for that. Then I went and I got hospitalized in the hospital. That's a separate department. Then I went and I got, uh, uh, what do you call this? Um, Rehab. I was in rehab because my arm needed rehab. And that's a separate bill from another vendor. Then I had the ambulance. I mean, it can be quite, quite easily one patient, one on that tort law suit can have dozens of records from dozens of vendors. And so the lawyer pays my client to retrieve all those records for each person. And each record has a fee. And so I created a solution for them in SQL Server. Uh, to record the fees and keep track of that, and of course, sell, uh, ask the lawyer to pay for the fees plus the the fees of my client to get all those documents together. But man, you know, it's just like it's like you need it's, it's like you need a hundred people. Like you have exponentially, you need exponentially to grow this business of his. Mm -hmm. He's got to hire many people because there's a capacity limit of how many requests one person, one employee can process. Right. So he's got, and, and I, I would love instead to have an AI that overnight will analyze these requests because he works business hours. But what if we had an AI that we trained in Azure that can look at these requests and advance them, right? The obvious stuff. Oh, there's no HIPAA file. Let me send the uh, the, the lawyer an email. It says, hey, you need to have your... Uh, the person in the lawsuit to sell HIPAA. That's fairly straightforward because there's no HIPAA in the claim. It needs an email, right? I mean, that you could probably do right now with access to SQL Server, but that's an example. The other thing is it's miss, uh, missing date or missing missing information as to which hospital they went to or, you know, whatever that is. So you can use the AI to handle the trivial stuff, the menial stuff, and then have your people focus on what's important, which is calling people. And requested the medical workers. Now, I saw a demo at Google, and Roy, stop me if you saw the demo. I saw a demo at Google where they had the AI call salon for a appointment, hair appointment. Did you guys ever see that? No. Yeah. Is, so, this, is this a recent one? Yes. Oh, okay. So okay. Let's do a search on the web. And George, if you can find the link, do a search for Google AI hair salon appointment. And it's uncanny because the AI sounds like a person. Why does it sound like a person? Because when AI calls the the sound says, you know, hi, this is uh, Juan. I'm the AI for Juan. I'm here too. I'm Juan's AI. I'm here to get an appointment, right? So they, that's something they're, they're, they're doing. They have to add the AI to clear that to an AI. Yeah, how can I help you? The person says. And then the AI mm -hmm. says, well, look, um, she, she, they use the um, right, in the conversation. Yeah, it yeah, makes yeah. it sound natural. Um, yeah, 
Well, I would like yeah. to have his hair cut uh, next uh, Friday at uh, 12, between 12 and 3. Oh, you know what? Next Friday at 12, 3, I don't hear, yeah, but is he, can he come in uh, Thursday in the morning instead? And so it checks his account, my calendar automatically and says, oh, yeah, Thursday at 4, he's a, Thursday at 9, he's available. Wonderful. Okay, I'll see him. At, and that's it. Yeah, he puts it in my calendar. I mean, it's just an, an unreal usage. You know what? No, I, I saw this demo, but a few years ago. I think they've, uh, yeah. They've updated it. it. Every, yeah, yeah updated, every year but, they but, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, no, and so, so, you know, the fact of the matter is that what we're seeing now is what they worked on last year. The, 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 the amazing, truly amazing stuff is what they're working on now, right? And so it's an elliptical curve. As to improvements, so thanks, George, for the link. So, if you want to see that uh, demo, guys, there's a, George just posted in the link there. I'm not sure that's the full link. That's just so that's just, probably it. Yeah, yeah, that was the first hit. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, right here, guys. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, I didn't want to sidetrack you. I'm sorry, Roy. Go ahead. No, 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 no. It's good. No, it's. I love are, we, are we done with the presentation, or are you thinking about this? Um, I, yeah, I'm, clo I'm closing it off soon. Okay. But you know, I, I love these dialogue and everything and it's the community spirit you know what i mean yeah. so it's not about me <laughs> yeah you know, so right, see, okay. let's talk about how much this is going to cost okay okay cool so in okay th this is the gist right there's a uh, uh, example calculation right and it's not straightforward like you look at this okay the model uh, context 14k like these are about the tokens and then prompt per 1000 tokens uh completion tokens like Okay, what does this mean? Like, like you know, like nobody has a clue, man. You gotta tell me what this is. Yeah, yeah, example yeah. calculation. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So let's say we pick uh, GPT three dot five Turbo sixteen K context. So let's say you have in, uh, input prompt token at two hundred, and then a completion token at four hundred. That's six hundred tokens, right? So the cost calculation here is uh, uh, for two hundred tokens. You know, that's uh, for uh, a thousand tokens, right? Mm -hmm. So you you, you get uh, yeah two thousand over two hundred over one thousand. You get like you know uh, point zero zero five cents yeah, is equal to point zero zero one uh, <laughs> cent, whatever, right? Okay. Yeah. And then the and then for the output, you know, same similar calculator. And then you gotta yeah. you add them up the input and the output. Uh, prompt token and the completion token cost. So, yeah. is is exactly this. So, okay. six hundred tokens so, is how many uses of the AI? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that one use of the AI? Six hundred tokens? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six hundred tokens is what the. So, AI if I use it a thousand times, yeah, I would multiply a thousand times point zero zero three four and come up with yeah. three dollars and forty cents. A thousand times. So one, two, three. yeah, three dollars for it's correct. Let me still check. Yeah, see. yeah. I'm an engineer. Yeah. I'm an engineer by trade, but you know sometimes uh -huh. I fail. So <laughs> zero point zero zero three four times a thousand requests to the chat. Yep, three dollars and forty cents. All right, mm -hmm. sign me up for that. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's kind of kind of expensive just for a thousand. Rows well, of data. the thing is, you know, we have to look at our context, wow. right? We use we're Microsoft Access guys. Yeah, the, we have people who five or six are users at the most, right? Because let's face it, this is not Amazon that, that a million people are using applications, right? This is small businesses in the U.S. and Canada who hire us to create a, a, a database mm -hmm. for them, mm -hmm. and it's just uh, it just becomes really reasonable for the business to use it mm -hmm. at these costs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as it provides a really good value, then it's then it's not expensive, you know. So. So look, uh, I, I know you probably have more slides, but I really do think uh, this has been amazing. Yeah, I do yeah. want to have some final, get your final thoughts on the technology there in that slide there, and then your contact info. Okay, okay. So yeah, yeah. Just to really wrap up here, like where do we go for? So if you're new to this, you're curious, I recommend just get VS Code, uh, play with Python or your language of cho choice. Practice, you know, really practice on prompt engineering techniques with the uh, a chat a, uh, playground there, play around with it, like, you know, as much as possible. Uh, yeah. Again, learn the whole embeddings model. Right? So if you really want to get serious and do more like consulting-like engagements or projects in your company, 
learn the embeddings model, and then to go further and uh, maybe I thought in the net follow-up session is really um, to develop an app is to leverage frameworks, okay, to piece everything together, like an app with the UI, the vector database with the open a uh, API plus, you know, all these things, you need a framework. So a uh, popular one is Langchain, open source, um, more Microsoft-centric is Semantic Kernel. Uh, so these are our frameworks. So that's the, the, the next thing you want to kind of uh, dip your your feet into. So so that's where you want to go. Uh, there's of, of obviously more more to this, but, you know, just for beginners. And so, yeah, yeah so I want to open up with Q&A. Here's my, my socials. So any, any questions? Anybody any questions? Now is the time. Unmute yourself, please, or write in the chat. All right, well, we be get ready for some questions, and I do want to give you some feedback. I think that... We have a transcending moment in humanity. And there have been several of these. Some of them have occurred in our lifetime, right? Such as the cell phone. That occurred in my lifetime. I mean, I don't have hair on my head, so I can't remember when there was no cell phones around. There was only pay phones or home phones or business phones, right? That was transcendent technology. Then the internet came. Transcendent. Then the LCD TV, right? TVs used to have, I grew up with tubes. I would go right there to the tubes to buy tubes for our TV, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's been several waves. This is the latest wave, AI. Nobody's an expert right now. Everybody's just playing with this technology and learning how to use it. So it's a new California gold rush. And it's important that you guys are in on, the, you're on the ground floor of this and be able to leverage it and be able to use it. I'm leveraging it in my practice. Uh, I can't give you too much details, but I'm leveraging AI in my practice because I am forcing my developers to use it in order to be familiar with it. And, you know, I get complaints. Oh, it's not too accurate. Oh, I wrote this this lousy code. I'm like, I don't care. It's just going to get better. Don't use the code they ask you for, but I want you interfacing with the AI on a daily basis. And so, um, I, you know, I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm a Microsoft Go partner, and now they changed the program now you have to be a solution partner. And I picked data and AI as my category to become a, a solution partner for Microsoft. Yeah. The technologies I'm seeing as an MVP are just blowing me away. I mean, uh, it's just really amazing. The new co-pilot from Microsoft 365, Roy, have you seen the, have you had a chance to play with that yet or not yet? Yeah, yeah, it's like you know, watching the videos and stuff, stuff like that. But they haven't, they haven't given me a license either. So, I mean, no, they're, no, like, no one's they're really holding those close to their vest. But there's like yeah. 600 companies right now. Yeah. The uh, the cost is thirty dollars per person, and right away, I know my all my clients are cost conscious. They're like, I'm not paying thirty dollars to use an AI, but I found recently a video on YouTube of another MVP and he puts it in I thought it was an amazing perspective. So I'm gonna put that in the in the chat comments here. Yeah, yeah, watch of that. what he thinks is the payback. And he's saying, look, don't buy thirty dollar license for everybody. Oh okay. All right. Oh, he's oh, he's a buddy of mine. I just I just met up he's with him. I've been trying to reach this guy, man. You gotta put him in touch for me. He says Juan's been trying to reach you. We played yeah, yeah, his calls. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, you know, he's, I think he's great. I think he's awesome. He really nailed it for me. Yeah. And basically, what he says in this video is uh -huh. the $30 per month is not for everybody in the company. What it is is for those people who are superstars who are over leveraged, right? Because they're superstars, what is it? They get loaded with work. Everybody comes to them for answers. They're just. There's just super superstars and they're over leveraged. And with the AI, it's going to make them much more productive. And you start with these superstars, and then the benefits of the AI get spread around the company. And uh, watch the video. It really was an eye opener for me. And mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm, I'm having a management meeting tomorrow with my management team from around the world. And uh, we're going to be we're going to, we're going to be looking at this video. I'm, I made him I made him watch the video. Because it really is uh, something where I, as a partner, need to incorporate this AI in my practice, right? Dog food it, so that I in turn can help my clients. Because the number one thing my clients are calling about, and I'm asking them is, Juan, what do you think about this AI? I'm telling you, there, a month doesn't go by when a client reaches out to me. What is about this AI? And I really want to be at the vanguard of using the AI stack at Microsoft 
to really really turbocharge the productivity of my my customers in office and their, their operations. All right, anybody has any questions before we go? All right, well, look, Roy, I do want to thank you, uh, my yeah. friend. You did a great job here. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to record this, put it on YouTube. I'll let you know when the – actually, George, who was on the call here, he's my editor. He'll be uploading this later on this week. Knowing George, he won't uh, He won't disappoint to upload this later on this week. Yeah. He'll be able to give you that. Go ahead, just George. Make, just make sure I get the, the recording. Yes. The link to the recording. Yeah. I yes. probably will get it done this weekend. Nice. Good. And then, um, George, you want to do a plug for your next meeting? Yeah, Nick. Well, I will just tell you very quickly. We Our next meeting is in October, the Access Pacific. Uh, Pat Hartman, who is an Access developer from way back, is going to demonstrate a technique for creating bound forms that use cross-tab layouts, denormalized data in a cross-tab in a bound form. And she's going to demonstrate her technique for implementing that. I'm looking forward to see the magic that she does to make that happen. <laughs> Fantastic. Again, uh, George, if somebody wants to attend, where do they get the session details? Which uh, is access user group website. Uh, Accessusergroups.org. And then yep. there you'll find George Chapter Pacific. And uh, please join them, especially if you're on the West Coast, uh, because you know it can be a little... It's ideal for people in Europe because it's like lunchtime for them <laughs> when it's uh when it's uh, or early morning for them when it's uh doing it. So I knew I know some of the European guys uh, drop in on your sessions, right? Well, actually, it's the other way around. We're getting people from New Zealand and Australia because wow. it's the middle of their day. Nice. And a couple of people have stayed up. I think what did Adrian say? It was like two o'clock in the morning for him. But yeah. <laughs> We're getting more and more drop-ins from uh, New Zealand and Australia. Probably a third of our attendees have been. so. Nice. So, yeah. All right. So, look, uh, we are meeting again the second Tuesday of the month. This is the first time you came. Please, thank, welcome. I uh, appreciate you attending our meeting. You can learn more about our chapter at accessusergroups.org. You can link with me at linkedin.com slash in slash Juan Soto. We uh, look forward to see you again next month uh, here. Uh, we'll have a topic picked up before then. Roy, thank you one last time for showing up and giving us this amazing presentation, my friend. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.